So by now, I was hoping to upload that 240 video, but every morning it's still too cold. Well, because it gets cold at night, and then the metal of the 240 is really cold, and then if I try to paint on that cold metal, it's it's not going to work out like it should. So I'm just going to wait a couple days longer. By the end of the week, it should definitely be warming up. Then I'm going to do the base coat and clear coat on the interior of the 240, upload that video. That'll all be on its way. So what I'm working on right now is I got to redo the transmission tunnel inside the old 1964 Ranchero. If you saw the last video, you saw that was really really where the main issue was, was the drive shaft was smacking the bottom of the car. So I'm going to cut all that out and completely redo it. And now you're watching the tax return baller on the horizon channel of YouTube. Welcome to Boat Vision. So what is up you guys and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on another video. So as you can see right here, we got the floor completely going. This is how the old one was. I already cut that out. That's all good. And this, that's all good. And as I was cutting, I had the drive shaft out of here, but now you can see the drive shafts back in here. And you can really get an idea of how high up in the floor it was coming. And it's so off centered because that Explorer rear end is off centered. I don't know why Ford did that, but the tires are centered amongst the chassis, meaning this tire is not any far left or right than that tire is, but then the differential is way off. So that's the main reason why I was hitting and because it was lowered a whole bunch anyways. So that's why this looks funny, but I want the tunnel to be centered amongst the vehicle and then the drive shaft will have plenty of room to go up and down with this cut. So now the next step is getting this all cleaned up, get my new metal bent. This is just 18 gauge sheet metal right here. And that'll work really nicely because it's going to be nice and strong. And by the time I put the bends in it, it's going to work out great. So that's the game plan. So now that the old transmission tunnel's cut out, I need to kind of start to get an idea of what I want to do for the new tunnel. So what I bought at the store is a two foot wide by, I don't know. I don't know how long that sheet of metal is, but I do know that it's two feet or 24 inches. So I'm going to have my paper like this and I got my not so straight straight edge. So right now, this is to represent the piece of metal that I have. This is 24 inches from this side to this side, or two feet, like I said. This distance, I'm not so worried about it right now. So the first thing that I gotta do is I gotta find my center point. Once I find the center point, then it's gonna make all the bending easy, and then I just plug in my numbers, and then I go from there. So I know from here to here, which is gonna be the top of the tunnel, or the flat surface of the tunnel, I know that I wanna make that five inches, that's five inches. So half of five is from the center point. I gotta go 2.5 inches up, 2.5 inches down. So that's gonna be the flat surface of the tunnel. And then I wanna do a 45 degree bend off that. And then another 45 degree bend off that to make it a perfect 90 with the flat surface. So it's gonna be flat surface, 45, and then another 45 to create a 90 in the end. <laughs> Now it's time to take this design from paper, take it over to the press, and get that bent up.
So now that everything's bent up how it should be, I'm happy with the shape. I mean, that worked out really good to go from the 45 to a 45. That's the first 90. Another 45, another 45. That's the second 90. That makes 180 degrees, meaning it's going to come up and then completely straight down. That's the 180. That's how it's going to work. And that's, that's working really nicely. So now the next step is to go ahead and tack it in place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the top, have it pushed over from the bottom, kind of tack it all in there to have very minimal gaps. And that's going to work out just fine. So that's the next step. Get it tacked in. Boom, and all right, now that it was tacked down, I went ahead and I wrapped it up. I don't need to show you the entire process because it'll get really boring and it's kind of time consuming. So here we have it. It looks pretty solid, I think. Pretty straightforward. There's the design. The welds look decent. It'll work ultimately. It's kind of tricky when you're welding these old floors and there's all the seam sealer and all the paint. It's real important to try to take it all the way down to bare metal. But if you don't, you're going to have some not so perfect welds. But either way, the strength is there. It looks really good. So now I got to get this to look like the rest of the floor. So I'm going to go ahead and prime it, let that dry. And then I'm going to put the sound deadening over that. And then it's going to be looking really good. I mean, I'm super happy with how it looks. Strength wise, it's solid. Man, we are good to go. And this design is probably giving me four to five inches extra clearance because before I was dealing with the width not being wide enough because of that off centered rear end. And now it's plenty wide enough, plenty high enough. So we should not have any issues whatsoever. <laughs> Man, so I think that's gonna be all for this one. It's really kind of crazy to see it because just the other day, two days ago, this was completely different. Right now, it doesn't even really look like I did anything and that's the goal, you know? It's gotta look like you didn't really do anything. You know, you don't wanna interrupt what's already there. You want it to look like it was meant to be there and that's easy because I made it before. I made the new one so it blends in just fine. And before, this went along here and then it was kind of diving down. This is all the extra room that we needed and that's gonna be perfect, that's gonna be just fine. In the next video, I'm gonna take the Ranchero, we're gonna keep working out the kinks. It's kinda got a misfire, but it shouldn't be too hard to get figured out. And that's gotta kinda be expected when you're doing something as extensive as a build like this where you're completely putting a motor in it from a different car. This motor was never carbureted, it didn't come carbureted from the factory. So we're gonna work out the kinks. Now I'm more than confident that the drive shaft is not gonna hit at all. We got plenty of clearance, everything looks really good. I could not be more happy with how the Ranchero is coming out and that's going to be all. I'm going to get home and edit this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe, do all the stuff. You know what it is, YouTube. I'm out.